We have zero control over our technology these days. From most major software only being released through subscription services where you lose access the moment you stop paying, and even when you are paying, you can still lose colors, to the vehicles we drive and the CPUs in our PCs having physical features locked behind paywalls, to user customization vanishing more and more every day. For all the that NFTs get, the majority of big tech purchases we make these days are really no better. As someone who grew up in the era of wild Windows XP skins, browser stalling MySpace layouts, and rad IRC client customization, I feel like I'm suffocating a little bit. I need, I need things to feel a little more like home. Ah, so much better. Cursed, but better. Let's get you there, even if there isn't quite how you want it to look. There's tons of options. This is just what feels like home for me. Speaking of ownership and control over your data, I have my own video streaming site, Nebula, that I built with my creator friends, and you can sign up for that with our bundle with Curiosity Stream linked below. Customizing Windows 10 and 11 has honestly been a nightmare since 2015. Cool apps like 7 Plus Taskbar Tweaker and the tabbed File Explorer plugin Clover just kept breaking and, and, needing, and needing constant updates with every major Windows update, which was really frustrating for a long time. And while I have made tutorials in the past for fully skinning Windows 10, it takes a ton of work and again, not if, will break quickly. That tutorial does not work anymore. I'm not ashamed to admit we're taking the easier route this time. I picked up the Stardock Object Desktop bundle on sale, which includes a ton of Windows customization tools. I've been eyeing window blinds for 15 years now, something like that, but never really managed to justify spending for it, especially since the older versions of Windows were more easily skinnable. And from what I could tell, it never really worked with Windows 10 in the first place. Instead, they released the Curtains alternative at the time, which wasn't as customizable. But they just got window blinds updated for Windows 11 this year, and you can finally fully skin Windows again. This was my primary objective. Above all other software, I am so sick of the taskbar, start menu, and window decorations of Windows 11, and I wanted something unique. I wanted something that was me. I miss all the customization that I had in KDE and X11 on Linux. Window Blinds lets you change your entire visual look of Windows, from the window borders to the buttons to the scroll bars to the start menus, everything. It comes with a ton of themes built in, including ones that emulate older Windows versions, such as 7, Vista, SD, and classic 95, 98 looks. Mac OS X got that as well. And then there's some unique ones. Plus, you can download tons more user themes on their website. There's even a crazy Halo Combat Evolved theme and a Doom Eternal UI theme, if that's your thing. I, it would be pretty cool for set PCs, actually, now that I think about it. Selecting the style and applying it will blur your screen for a few seconds, probably crash explore, and then load back with the customization. If it looks wonky at first, give it a bit or to catch up or just reboot, reboot your machine. It took a bit for mine to fully take, but then once it did, I was good. This gets you up and running really quickly. I went with the base Windows XP Luna theme for now, as it feels super comfy and at home for me, but I probably won't stay here. I like constantly changing the look of my work environment, so I already downloaded a bunch of the other themes that I'm pretty excited to use in the future months. Beyond the out-of-the-box look, you also get control to tweak the colors, transparency effects, uh, textures, and all of those things applied to the different areas, as well as the fonts of the theme, and you can do everything you can to make it your own. Go ahead, change a color, tweak a button, take a screenshot, share it with me on Discord or over on Mastodon. I wanna see what you come up with. Then you can jump into settings to change the wallpaper or tweak how all of these individual themes affect different areas of the Windows UI and set up per application exclusions when the effect just totally breaks the UI of a specific program. By default, it has Opera excluded. In my experience, I've had apps that use their own title bar, like my themed FooBar 2000 and Discord that just look different, but nothing has actually been broken yet. It was at this point that I was able to breathe a big sigh of relief. It may look silly to some, but with a certain feel of a computer use being so familiar, it just really starts to feel at home. Feels comfy. Feels, feel, feels a lot less hostile. Plus, I get control over how it looks, something that I've never felt satisfied with Windows control for basically a decade now. The Luna theme I used replaces the start menu with a Windows XP style menu by default, and th this is fine. I have a lot of nostalgia and comfort with the XP and even the Windows Vista era start menus, funnily enough. Uh, but for my use case, I don't actually want this. I started down this whole rabbit hole, actually specifically to 
because I was fed up with Windows 11's horrendous start menu, and I wanted to fix it. I, I love a lot of what Windows 11 brought to the table. That's why I upgraded at the end of last year and never looked back. And after adjusting my muscle memory to get used to the centered taskbar all year, I actually think that I feel that it's the superior way to go. But the start menu is utterly useless. Completely, just in case my feelings weren't clear to whomever at Microsoft works on this, this is by far the worst start menu iteration since 3.1. Bad. Anyway, Start 11 helps me fix this. There's no end of Start Menu replacements out, out there, and I've even covered a few uh, in my video on taking control of Windows 11 from earlier this year. I'll have linked below. But Start 11 seems to be a lot of people's top recommendation when I was looking into it and integrates seamlessly with all of this. So, why not? My real complaint here is that the Windows 10 style menu is the only resizable option. I much prefer the older menu styles with the folders and links and everything of Windows 7, Windows XP, but the Windows 10 one is the only one that I seem to have control over to make bigger so I can shove all the shortcuts I want onto it. Which is fine, it works, it just doesn't entirely fit the XP aesthetic, however, that means I'll keep it consistent whenever I'm changing themes anyway. I need to pin a lot of shortcuts because I'm moving more and more to trying to use exclusively portable app installs whenever possible. And those don't really show up in search very well, and so I just want to have them jam-packed into a big start menu that I can load up because they don't get start menu entries anyway. I'll talk about this more in a future video. Start 11 also lets you put the taskbar back to the left side of the menu, which you can do without added software, by the way. Uh, they did eventually cave to demand and release that as a feature, but it, it allows you to control it there. It allows you to replace the start menu with something custom, though only if you push it to the left. And there's a bunch of other taskbar tweaks, which again, only work if you push it to the left. But I've spent all this time getting used to it being centered. So for now, I'm just staying that way, but I can feel myself being pulled back to the left side of the screen with every word I speak. <sighs> Lastly, Start 11 uses its own search, which is much better than 10 or 11 search. With Windows skinned and the Start menu made competent again, frankly, we could call it done here. You can click off, do whatever. This is great. I haven't found a good Windows XP fitting foobar theme yet, but otherwise we are rocking and rolling here. But I wanted to explore, as Object Desktop comes with other apps as well. Cursor FX lets you change out your cursor for lots of built-in options or ones you can download from Win Customize or make your own. This was... Honestly, my biggest disappointment with the software suite as virtually all of these cursors end up looking blurry and pixelated at larger sizes, which I use both for visibility and for tutorial accessibility in my screen captures. I guess I'm gonna have to make my own neat looking, you know, high DPI capable cursor at some point because I did not like this about the built-in ones or the downloadable ones. You don't need cursor FX to do this. I I've made tutorials on swapping out cursors manually. It it's just handy since it's already included and does it all at once. To keep pushing things because I'm ridiculous, I also wanted to swap out the default icons. I don't hate them, but I'm not a fan of the icons in Windows 11. Icon Packager lets you do just that, swap them out. Again, some pre-made packs are included or you can download from when customized or make your own. I may commission icons and a cursor one day together, but for now I'm settled on the Paraform download from when customized. And while it's not a perfect Windows XP look by any stretch, it's something that just feels right to me. It feels like some of those older Linux distros that I used back in the day. Since I'm going through all this trouble to make icons look nice, I might as well re-enable them on my desktop as I've kept them off all year and use fences to keep them organized. By default, fences will create little groups or fences to sort your icons on the desktop by type. So you have shortcuts, you got folders, you got files, though some shortcuts did show up in the, in the files fence for some reason. This is a great start. Organization already better, but even better is the folder portals, which lets you feature other folders on your desktop readily accessible. So I have pinned my Dropbox and my iCloud Drive that I use to share files with others, as well as my video resources folder that has my assets for video editing. This is wild. Game changing for me, especially since you can control where they show up on other monitors, when you connect and disconnect monitors, like good stuff here. If you want to change everything else, Object Desktop comes with tools to set animated desktop backgrounds, change system sounds, which I keep turned off so I didn't use, free up storage space, organize windows better, like the physical windows, well, not physical, the windows on your screen, control multiple PCs with one keyboard and mouse with multiplicity, and you can add tabs to programs. That last one, called Groupie, I was very excited for, especially since Microsoft has drug its feet on tabbed Notepad and Explorer, and the tabbed Explorer and the Insider builds right now make just pales in comparison to even the, the Clover plugin from 12 years ago. 
but Groofy seems to break custom themes, so for now I'm not using it. Call it cursed, call it a perfect fit. The point is that you can make it whatever you want. Being able to customize your technology and to do so with minimal setup. We didn't use any scripts or config files or terminal commands. That's extremely important to me. I now get to customize my look whenever I want and I won't run out of looks anytime soon. And now you can too. User customization has been locked away more and more in favor of tighter DRM pretending to be security and desires to keep a clean corporate consistency for advertisers. Did you know that not only did we used to have unique backgrounds for our YouTube channels, but we also got to have custom subscribe buttons above our videos. A lot of it looked quite amateurish, I'm not gonna lie, but that was part of the fun. These days, the common argument is that customization is less possible due to most people not being hardcore nerds and not wanting to tinker with config files all day. And I, I, I get that. I never really liked setting up rain meter back in the day because I didn't want to, I didn't have the attention span to dig through all the config files and things breaking all the time. But Windows used to just have a deep theme editor with tons of customizability built in. And you could just download themes, double click on them and select them through a menu. It was as easy as it gets. Welcome back. Where do we go from here is usually the question I get asked the most after videos like this. Instead of making you wait for my next video, it's already available right now to watch over on my own streaming site, Nebula. Nebula is a creator owned video site built and shaped by me and my creator friends, such as Low Spec Gamer, Thomas Frank, Renee Ritchie, and plenty, plenty of others. Polyphonics on there, Legal Eagle, so many awesome creators. My videos are higher quality there, ad free, and now early on Nebula. So if you want to see my next video and keep learning how to master your tech and make things weird, that would be where to go. The best way to sign up for Nebula is with CuriosityStream, another great streaming site full of thousands of documentaries and entertaining content, including NYC Revealed, all about how the underlying infrastructure of New York City makes it tick. Just like this video was all about messing with the underlying themes of Windows to make it your own so that you know how to navigate it better. We worked out a fantastic bundle with CuriosityStream where if you sign up at the link below, you get Nebula bundled with it for free at just $14.79 for a year of amazing content. Two sites for the price of one at an amazing low price. Get the best deal in streaming and see my videos early, plus my documentary series print screen at curiositystream.com slash ebos. I've been an advocate for user control and customization for a very long time now, and I've finally committed to my main links page being a fully Y2K cringe uh, NeoCities page, NeoCities being a open source revival of GeoCities from back in the day, instead of being corporate and locked down like Linktree, BioLink, and whatever. Those are great services, although Linktree has some issues with content filtering, but 10 minutes of HTML copy pasting in a cheap domain host like Namecheap or Porkbun, and you have something that you own you control and you can make however you want. You don't gotta wait for them to support your new platform or anything, you just put it on there. I've been looking at iPad customization lately since it's basically my laptop and I'm always disappointed at how limited it is and how most of the apps that seem to be able to do much are subscription based. Even my iPod Touch I could change the icons on and you can't anymore. My, how tech has fallen. Remember to be kind, rewind.